Welcome and welcome. So we have Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. We have Andrew and Jacqueline. I know them. <laughs> I know them as well. We have James and Anthony. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we got we got almost anybody. I think we are missing one person, but um, We're supposed to be maybe she will connect later. Okay. Amanda, I miss you. I miss you too. <laughs> <laughs> I miss everybody. It's so good to see some familiar faces and new faces. I feel like I've been practicing for the last... Ooh. Okay, we were lost. Okay. You want this? Do you need the speaker? Or no, I think okay. okay. So welcome everybody. Um, first of all, uh, I will kindly ask to put yourself on, on mute. Um, and of course, if you have any questions, you can use the chat or you can unmute yourself for um, any questions to um, Amanda. And so in this way, we are just avoiding um, background noises. Um, so let me introduce uh, Amanda to all of you. I know some of you uh, al already knows her and um, uh, she's a good friend of mine and she's a um, bartender since 2001. And uh, she's also an event planner and she's very creative and she loves uh, doing all sort of things with uh, drinks and uh, and not only. So uh, tonight she will uh, teach us um, to do uh, four um, famous drinks for Italian people. We usually drink them during what we call uh, aperitivo or happy hour. Uh, and uh, the drinks are the Negroni, the Bellini, the Americano and the Aperol Spritz. So she will uh, teach you how to make them, but also she will teach you how to use the right tools and uh, to uh, do like um, finish, uh, final garments. So please, Amanda. All right, am I still on mute? Nope. Okay, good. So first, yes, my name is Amanda. I've been bartending for, gosh, since 2001 when I was in college, I bartended uh, at a bunch of different hotels like the Bacara Resort and the Biltmore Four Seasons. Uh, I learned lots and since then I've been an event planner, bartender. I specialize in uh, private events, special events, weddings. I specialize in creating cocktails for events. So I have lots of fun creating, building, exploring. Um, I really like cooking as well so it's nice to partner the cooking with the drinking. <laughs> you can find lots of different recipes. Um, I wanted to start off, I want to know everyone's name. Um, I guess one at a time, can we unmute ourselves and introduce yourself uh, and let me know your favorite drink. Carlotta, do you want to start? My favorite drink? Oh, for sure, the Spritz. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Spritz is my favorite. I like light drinks, so I'm not an heavy drinker, so Spritz is uh, the, uh, the right one for me because it's, uh, it's light. So I love it. Oh, good, good. Uh, maybe Jacqueline, do you want to introduce yourself? You and Andrew? Oh, you have to unmute yourself. Oh. <laughs> I'll jump in really fast. I'm Jennifer. Hi, guys. Hey. Um, I'm usually a whiskey drinker, but if I'm not, my favorite, like, fancier drink is a French 75 with cognac. So Ooh, that's usually what I go for. Okay, I figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we have it, like, we have a laptop, but we also have it on our TV, so it's easier to move around, so. Oh, perfect. I don't know how to do it. Um, my name is Jacqueline, and I love, um, of wine. <laughs> My name is Andrew. Uh, clearly, I'm the tech person who was out of the room. 
but uh, I normally drink beer or whiskey. That's my go-to. So it'd be nice to have something with a little extra flavor. Perfect. And I can't see the name, but anyone can jump in and introduce themselves. Uh, I'm Christine, and uh, hi. And uh, we lived in Italy for several years, so in summer, my favorite drink is a Bellini, and in winter, my favorite drink is a Negroni. Oh, those are good. And I'm James, the trailing spouse. Uh, <laughs> and at this cycle in life, I enjoy rye Manhattans. But the Negronis work wonderfully. Yes, good, good. And okay. then we miss just Anthony. Anthony, what's your favorite drink? I'm trying to, I, there, there I am. Hi, uh, my favorite drink, I think, is an Americano. Although, I'm, I'll, hopefully, I'll find out a true Americano today. <laughs> there, you know, there are a lot of variations to the beverages that I'll be teaching. As Carlotta mentioned, I'm teaching the Negroni, the Americano, uh, the Bellini, and the Aperol Spritz. There are a lot of variations. So if there's a preference of liqueurs or alcohols that you would rather put in, um, I know maybe Jen, you would like this, to spike up or to spruce up the Bellini, people add cognac. So there's always little variations here or there. So you can be creative um, with your beverages. But what I'm gonna teach today are just the classic recipes so that you have a strong base and you can build from there. Um, so did we get everyone's introductions? I don't want to miss anyone or skip anyone. Thumbs up. So for starters, good, good, good. Maybe I'm going too fast. So I do want you to be able to chime in. You're allowed to, um, you can just raise your hand visually like I'm doing now, or you can raise your hand in the chat room. Carlotta will let me know if I've missed any chats. Um, so if I'm going too fast, going too slow, if you have commentary, please, don't be shy, just let me know, because I want this to be more interactive as well and informational for you. Um, I do want to start off with a few things as far as bar tools. This day and age, everyone, I guess not day and age, but the past few months, I've considered home. Home is where the bar is. So we can't really just run to the store and get anything. We've had to be pretty creative with what we want um, as far as produce, liquors, whatever. Um, bar tools, we just use what we have at home. So a few things that I pulled out. I also want to mention, I have two cameras. So I have this one, which is above me. I don't know if you can see my hands. There we go. And hopefully I don't make anyone dizzy. I have it above me. Um, you can choose which views you want. Is everybody using a computer for their phones? So you can see multiple views. If, you, if you're using your phone, you can swipe all the way over and you can see all of us. So I don't know if that will be easier for you or not. So with that, I want to introduce some bar tools. So pretty much these are just standard basic bar tools. Everyone's probably already familiar with them. A few things that I really like to incorporate into my bar tool set. I like these little jars. I don't know if you can see them. I make my own simple syrups and anyone can make their own simple syrups. It's equal parts water, sugar, and you can add in any flavors, citrus flavors, peach flavors, cucumbers, uh, whatever I'm at events, I like to make my own on the spot so they're nice and fresh. So I always like these airtight little containers. I have a juicer, which you can use any sort of juicer. This is my favorite because it's super easy. You cut your citrus in half, throw it in, squeeze fresh for margaritas, anything. Um, I have a Hawthorne strainer. And again, let me know if you can't see anything or if you need explanation. Strainers are really important uh, when you're mixing beverages like martinis. Uh, you're gonna shake a lot of beverages, then you're going to pour them. You don't always want big chunks of ice. They have fine strainers. They have strainers like this that prevent those big chips from coming out. Um, you don't wanna dilute your beverage. You just wanna chill it, especially if it's a martini. Um, a couple of tools that we're gonna use today um, are peelers. So I have a vegetable peeler you can use for peeling, uh, making twists, just peeling some oranges, it's really fast. It has a big base so you can get a lot out of it. Also, I like the channel zesters. These have little, little zesters so you can just grind right into your fruit. You get that beautiful zest, you get that citrus flavor. Um, so, and then there's muddlers, which you use 
to really dig into rinds and mints to release those oils so that you have more flavor in your beverage. So you're not just tossing leaves in a drink and it does nothing. You want to open up those flavors and make it more aromatic. Um, of course, we have a wine tool and a bottle opener. Those are very handy. I feel like anyone who opens a bottle just needs it on hand, whether it's wine bottle, beer bottle, whatever. Um, I always travel with a small little paring knife that has a cover. I do a lot of events off-site, so this is just, I throw it in my bag. It's not necessarily I have something at home. Um, but those are some basic bar tools. Does anyone have any questions or has anyone seen something that they don't know what's what? Or anyone have a favorite bar tool that I missed? All right, one thing that I also like are these big, long spoons. I don't know if you can see it really well. Um, especially now, because we can't really get too close to cooties. So this is great for stirring gently. Uh, a couple of tricks when you're mixing drinks. You don't want to shake anything with carbonation or bubbles. You just want to lightly stir. So, oh, perfect, Jennifer, I see that. So, <laughs> we're going to be using this a lot today. Um, one really important thing I want everyone, um, can I get a thumbs up if you're pouring with me or drinking with me today? I see Jacqueline, Andrew, I see myself and two cameras. Jennifer, perfect, James. Awesome, so does anyone know what the secret count is to make a one and a half ounce uh, cocktail? How do you, does anyone have any idea? That's a lot of, um, no, that's a lot of seconds, Andrew. <laughs> so today, because we're with uh, Bay Area Italian events, we're gonna count as Italian. So I'm gonna get my Campari just because that's fun. I want everyone to grab their favorite liquor or spirit and a shot glass. And when you pour, I want you to count one Italian, two Italian, three Italian. And that's going to be your perfect pour for a one and a half alcohol, <laughs> one and a half um, ounces of spirit in your beverages. So I'm going to go ahead and start. And then as soon as you have your shot ready, we're all going to take it. So for me, I do want to mention I'm pregnant. <laughs> so I'm a pregnant bartender, but we're going to go one Italian, two Italian, three Italian. That gives you an ounce and a half. So just to kind of reiterate, Every second I count is a half ounce of liquor. So if I say one Italian, that's one second, that equals one uh, half an ounce. So if I'm doing three seconds, that's one and a half ounces. And you typically don't want more than that in your base of your beverage, otherwise it's gonna be unbalanced and you're gonna over pour yourself. All right, so I wanna see bottoms up as soon as everybody's ready. <laughs> awesome. I like the teamwork. Andrew, how about you? Did I miss it? Oh, we got James. <laughs> awesome. So again, so the perfect pour for one and a half ounces is three seconds. Um, I usually, when I'm pouring at home, two things to remember just really quickly for more hygienic purposes. I don't ever leave my pour stops on my bottles because things can get into it. So I like to keep my alcohols fresh. Um, everything that I serve, I like to keep either covered. So what I do is just a little trick. I keep a cup on the side, put all my caps in there. If I'm serving a party with friends, whatever it is, I like to just keep all my caps there, put on my pour stops, and then put them back on at the end of the night because alcohol does go bad. Um, especially alcohol, like a, a liqueur like vermouth, it is why it's great base like wine, it will get old. So if you don't refrigerate it, it will turn. So if you have any vermouth in your cupboard, it's probably not good. Um, you wanna always keep your vermouth in the refrigerator. All right, <laughs> bottoms up. So we have- Amanda, we yes. have a question from Jennifer. Why does the spoon have twists on the handle? Say that one more time. Why does the spoon have twists on the handle? So gentle, um, I don't know, just a quick spin. Usually you just want to kind of, the, the spoon is actually really, really flat. 
And so if you try and spin it on the flat part, it gets stuck, it can fall, it can chip your glass. If you hold it on the spiral part, it spins really easily. So it spins gently without having to, you know, violently shake it and ruin your carbonation. So it's just a quick little do 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 do, and you're good to go. And also, I'll get to this in a minute, but it also I pre-cut some garnishes. It's great to wrap your um, twists around. It fits just nicely if you have nice hydrated twists, and then you have a nice twist for your cocktail or your martini. But yeah, it's just so that you don't uh, lose the carbonation in your beverages. Do I have any questions before I move on to our first drink, which is going to be the Aperol Spritz? Not in the chat. Perfect. All right. So what I want to do, I'm going to move my shot. I can't drink it again, so I'm just going to move it to the side. So Aperol Spritz are traditionally the happy hour drink. Um, it's not early enough, or I guess it's too early uh, in the day for any sort of bourbon or rye Manhattan. You just, you just want to kind of gently ease into the evening, 6, 7 p.m. So a lot of people will do any sort of spritz, and the Aperol spritz is really, really, really popular. Um, it's also, gosh, it has Aperol, which the recipe has been a secret since 1919. It was created in Italy. Uh, the spritz was actually created closer into the 1950s as more of that pre-happy hour, pre-dinner drink. Um, it's a digestive, it has purple flowers, it has roots, it has tree bark, and it has, oh, pop quiz. Does anyone know what the flavor of Aperol is? James? <laughs> so. Is it cherry? What? Cherry? Are you saying cherry? It has, it has cherry in it. It's like a, it's more of a bittersweet orange rooty flavor. More of yeah, a, orange. and it's very aromatic. It does have those darker cherry flavors, but not heavy at all. All right, so let's get to it. So our first beverage is gonna be the Aperol Spritz. It is so hot today. This is the perfect drink. So you wanna build your beverage. So I'm gonna serve it in a wine glass. You can serve it, typically it's served in a wine glass because you want it to hold your Prosecco. Uh, champagne flutes are just gonna be a little too narrow. You can't get the ice in. Um, you're going to not be able to put the right portions of your alcohols, Proseccos, and uh, ice in there. So I'm gonna put a little bit more just because it's hot. All right, so first things first. For the Aperol Spritz, it's a three, to two to one ratio. Uh, three ounces of Prosecco, two ounces of Aperol, and uh, one ounce of soda water. And that's to make it more refreshing during that happy hour. So first things first, even though Prosecco is the main ingredient, I'm gonna pour the Aperol because it's going to sink to the bottom. And Jen, I'm gonna use my spoon, my twisty spoon to help me stir it all together. So does anyone remember, if I have to pour two ounces of Aperol, how many Italians do I have to count? Four. <laughs> Four I'm, che I'm cheating. <laughs> because every second is a half ounce. One Italian, two Italian, three Italian, four. So that's gonna be your Aperol. I'm going to pour some Prosecco. So it's gonna be three ounces or really however much you want. Again, I'm gonna go back to what your own taste preference is. If you like a lot of Prosecco, if you just want a hint of that bittersweet orange flavor, um, you can do less of the Aperol, more of the Prosecco. It's totally up to you. Um, I'm just gonna follow the regular old recipe because I like that balance built. Three, four, five, six Italians. And so I'm gonna open my soda water. Um, I'm using club soda, fever tree, it's really good. Does anyone know the difference between soda water and tonic water? Not me. <laughs> <laughs> Explain a little bit to us. 
So soda water has salts in it, so it's going to be give you that uh, salty flavor. So it pairs really well with sweeter drinks or something that's really bitter. It helps balance it out. Tonic water has a sweeter flavor. It doesn't have those salts. So tonic goes really well with flavors like gin. Gin and tonic is really popular. It helps uh, combat that, that flower, that uh, juniper taste. So that's why you're going to use tonic water. So I've gone ahead and I've cut, cut some garnishes, but what I, your Aperol can be served with a lemon wedge, an orange wedge, an orange peel. I like the peels because I don't want the fruit in my beverage. I just want the fruit essence and oils. So what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see, but I'm twisting the orange peel and it's actually letting all those oils out and I'm just gonna drop it in. Um, a couple of things with garnishes, I'm gonna use my fruit peeler. I like big pieces. I like to do it over the beverage. That zest is gonna also make your beverage more aromatic, smells fresher. Um, I have a question. So as I'm going into that, I'm thinking of one of my favorite things. Uh, when I was a bartender way back, I used to ask everyone, does anyone know why we cheers when we drink or right before? No. So we cheers because we want to be able to indulge all five of our senses. You can hold the drink, you can smell the drink, you can taste the drink, you can see the drink. The fifth one being, you can't hear it unless you shake it or clean. So in order to fully engage in your beverage, you want to be able uh, to indulge all five of your senses. So with that, I really like, obviously, the smells and the tastes. Uh, so you just want to really, really, really make sure that your garnishes have a lot of zest. Again, you can actually use wheels, wedges, lemons, oranges, whatever you like. So our first beverage of the day, our Aperol Spritz. Can I answer any questions? Perfect. So again, there's lots of variations to Aperol Spritz. You don't have to add soda water. I like it because like Carlotta, I like more of that lighter flavor um, during that happy hour. It's not that, it's not Manhattan time. So. I'm gonna move this to the side, but that's our Aperol Spritz. Everyone, if you need to take a sip at any time, please don't be shy. All right, so the next beverage I'm going to teach is the Peach Bellini. There are a lot of uh, liqueurs out there and pre-made mixes. The most fun thing is to actually just do it yourself. Uh, what I did is I already cut two peaches, I peeled, so for the, the Bellini portion of it, um, traditionally it's used with white peaches and a bartender in Italy decided, oh, you know, I, I really just, there's so many peaches in this one particular area. I want to make a drink using these peaches. They're everywhere. I don't want them to go to waste. So he took a bunch of white peaches, uh, he muddled them together, added a little bit of lemon juice and uh, poured Prosecco over it. And that's how Bellini came. Um, the name of Bellini actually comes from an artist's painting, I forget his name, Giovanni Bellini, I believe, and uh, he had painted a picture of a saint, and the toga was this pink color that represented the same color as the actual Bellini that was made. So they named the Peach Bellini, the Prosecco beverage, after the artist who had painted this toga. Um, so jumping into the Bellini portion, I cut and peeled and pitted two medium-sized peaches, uh, you can get all sorts of peaches. You can use orange peaches, white peaches, whatever's in season. You can use frozen peaches if you like. I just use fresh peaches. So what you wanna do, two peaches pitted and peeled. I'm gonna use, I wanna make sure you can see it. I'm just gonna use my little magic bullet. You can use a food processor, you can blender, you can, use, you can muddle it if you'd like. I'm taking half of a lemon that I've already cut. I'm putting it in my juicer and I'm just gonna squeeze out about one, uh, one teaspoon of lemon juice. That's good. And then I'm going to put in one teaspoon of sugar. So you have two peaches, one teaspoon of lemon juice, and one teaspoon of sugar. So all you're gonna do, you're gonna mix it up, blend it real quick. Then you have a beautiful, a beautiful puree. 
because I'm a professional, I have some in the refrigerator. All right, so I already have some that I've made. The ratio when we do uh, peach bellinis is gonna be really your preference, but the traditional way is one ounce of peach puree to three to four ounces of Prosecco. Traditionally, um, in Italy, they like to use a nice dry Prosecco because the peach is going to be sweet um, and dependent on which, which kind of peaches you use, there is different tartness to it or sweetness to it. Depends on what part of the season there might be sugar, uh, more sugar. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to serve it in a wine glass. My wine glasses are a little bit more narrow. You can, there's no ice in this beverage. So you don't, you can put it in a, a flute if you'd like. I'm just gonna use a regular old wine glass. So I'm gonna take my little spoon. I'm just gonna put some in there. So I always put the heaviest ingredient first. That's one of my tips I've always done. You don't want to make an ugly drink essentially. So you want to be able to build it. So I put the most weighted liquids or weighted uh, spirits in first. So I went ahead and I put in about an ounce of peach puree that I just made, and I'm going to fill the rest with Prosecco. And like Jennifer, you like cognac. So a way to add more alcohol or to give it a little bit more uh, flavor, depending on what you like, you can add a uh, half a shot of cognac in it. You can do brandy, cognac, whatever you'd like. I mean, if you have the taste for it, you could do vodka or tequila. It's really up to you. Perfect. So does anybody have any questions on the peach bellini? There's actually a question on the spritz. And the question is, what other uh, varieties of spritz are there? Oh, all sorts. You can make, uh, you can make up a lot of different spritz. So, you can make up a lot of different kinds of spritzes. Uh, what you wanna do is you need to commit to uh, your liqueur. If you're going to use an Aperol or if you're going to use something really sweet, you want to add like a drier Prosecco. I do lots of, oh, what's my favorite? I can't think of the name. Uh, it's like a flower-based liqueur, but I love it with some Prosecco. It's almost like, a French 95. What's that? Alpha flower? It's the Genevieve one. I forget. It's like the, it's like an almond flower uh, liqueur, and that's my favorite. It's more like that nutty almond sweet flavor with a little bit of floral with Prosecco. Yeah, that one. Yes, that's my favorite. Oh, you're good. Elderflower. Elderflower, yes. But you can really make a spritz out of anything. Like, I happened to be at an event and um, the woman forgot to buy mixers. So I ran to Trader Joe's and I saw a cucumber watermelon juice that was just already pre-made. So I thought, oh, okay, perfect, I'll just get this. So I got some watermelon, I cut it up for a garnish, and I cut up another watermelon to actually muddle into the drink so there was that fresh flavor. And I added cucumber, watermelon, and um, Prosecco, just right on top. And it was a watermelon cucumber spritz. You can do a wine spritz where you can have any of your white wines and you can just pour in Prosecco or sparkling water. Uh, spritz doesn't necessarily mean you have Prosecco or champagne or sparkling uh, alcohol. You can just add soda water if you like. Did that help have... answer? Yes. Um, I have a question about the Bellini and the uh, peach puree. Is it um, okay to say do a lot of the peaches when they're in season and then freeze them into like ice cube kind of things to, to use during the rest of the year? You can do that. I find that when you freeze fruit, uh, it does bruise, so it's not going to be the color that you like. Um, it's not going to be the consistency of that, especially if you freeze strawberries or watermelon, you lose the hydration because when you freeze something, it does dry it out. You're not gonna have that richness of flavor that you would if you did it uh, fresh. I would say no more than two or three months in the freezer um, and then just test one out, see if it has that same consistency because you don't want it to get, it's like a weird stringy rubbery sensation if you freeze it too long. It's not gonna be as good. <laughs> 
So what would you suggest for the rest of the year? Wait till summer. Just kidding. <laughs> well, so there's beverages, uh, seasonal beverages. Um, well, you know what? You could, uh, today I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to get peaches. We've been, my, I've been sending my husband to the store all week. I'm like, get peaches. I need fresh peaches. And he finally found some today. But um, I asked him, I was like, any kind of peaches, if there's frozen peaches, baby food peaches, I don't care. I just need something that looks like peaches because it's not like you can taste my beverages. <laughs> um, but I would do frozen peaches for the rest of the year. They have plenty of uh, melodies and mixes at grocery stores. I don't know what they're offering now because we've all been on lockdown. Um, but we found these little itty bitty peaches uh, just at the store today, just at Knob Hill. Um, but you can do it with any fruit. You don't have to stick with peach bellini. You can do it seasonally. So even if you wanted, you can do a cucumber spread or a cucumber bellini. You can do, oh gosh, strawberries or raspberries or blackberries. You don't even have to do the puree of it, which I like the puree because it kind of exfoliates that flavor out and it makes the beverage um, more enhanced and more tastier, I think. But what, what other questions can I answer for you? Has I don't have, yes? I don't, have, I don't have a question, Miss Amanda, but I was thinking if you do the canned peaches, then you don't have to add sugar and maybe it's already there. Good thought. You can do that. And you don't have to add the sugar. I like it because it helps balance that squirt. Like I like the tartness of the lemon. And I like the sweetness sometimes. It depends on the season, if the sugar has fully come into that fruit. Um, you may or may not need the sugar at all. I like it because I have a sweet tooth. The lemon, the lemon is really nice. Did you make it? Yeah. Awesome. And I did the puree too, see? Ah, I'm so proud, oh yay. I'm really proud. It's, Really fun, and again, you can do that with anything. You can do it with cucumbers, you can do it with oranges or grapefruits. You can set up, like for baby showers or Mother's Day, you can set up kind of a puree bar. You can do kind of make your own or pre-make it ahead of time. But again, you kind of want to keep it chilled. Don't let it get warm. So what other questions? Any other questions um, on either the Aperol spritz or spritz in generals or Bellinis? I have a question in the chat. Does brandy work instead of cognac? Oh yeah, it's really whatever your taste preference is. Um, cognac is a little bit, it, it depends on what it is, but it can be a little less sweet, but it goes really well with it. And especially maybe during, well, I don't know if Christmas time, but I just always think of brandy and like uh, eggnog, just seasonally, depending on what you like. But yeah. All right, what is, has anyone ever made a Bellini before that wasn't peaches? Does anyone have any other ingredients they like to use? All right, well, let me go ahead and move on to my next beverage. Anyone? Uh, so I always like to ask, uh, what came first, the chicken or the egg? And in this case, what came first, the Americano or the Negroni? <laughs> Anyone have any guesses? Good question, Amanda. I don't know. I'm Italian. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Americano, just because American invented everything and they are always <laughs> the first. <laughs> That's my guess. <laughs> Could be. So I'm going to guess the other one then. The Negroni? Yeah. All right. Well, Carlotta is right, but not for the right reason. <laughs> 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 so the Americano... Uh, was invented in the 1860s and basically um, it's Campari sweet vermouth and soda water and the reason is they wanted um, lots of they wanted to drink but they didn't want to be sick and they didn't want to be hung over so it's a good drink with a lot of roots a lot of bitters it's a digestive so it helps them they can eat whatever they want um, whether it was cooked whether it was raw whatever they could get in the 1860s because like today, they don't have all these ways to preserve the food and eat it six months later. They didn't always have healthy food, so they needed something to help with their digestion so that they continue their, the work that they did back then. Um, so it was invented 
um, in Milan, Italy, back in 1860. And the Americano, again, it's just three ingredients. So I will take a rocks glass. Um, does anyone know the difference between a rocks glass, a wine glass, a flute? Does anyone know what the, the differences are? <laughs> so no. So rocks okay. glasses, they're made, they're shorter. And the reason why they're short and wide is because typically the liquids that you put in, you want them to air out. You want to uh, smell them, especially when you drink them. Um, that's why some wines have uh, wider, no, uh, wider, sorry, wider lips, because you also want to be able to indulge all your senses and smell it. Um, that just enhances the actual flavor. Um, some summer drinks come in tall skinny glasses with little straws. Those are beverages made that you don't necessarily need to smell it to enjoy it. It's just cucumber, refreshing, uh, mints. A lot of things are muddled, so all the flavors are mixed together. But rocks glasses are typically used for beverages that you don't blend, that you don't muddle, that you don't do anything to except for pour it. And that way you can smell it and enjoy it without manipulating it in any way. So for the Americano, um, does anyone know, do you, does anyone remember what I said about vermouth earlier? And I talk a lot, so I'm not offended if you have no idea. And it has to be refrigerated. Yes, sir. If it is not refrigerated, um, it can turn really quickly. I know that a lot of bartenders use vermouth to kind of line the glasses in the martinis. And you get your martini and you think, oh gosh, this is not good. <laughs> what did you do? You don't have to do much. How is it this bad? It's because it's basically vinegar in whatever your uh, spirit is. So my bottle is nice and fresh, uh, fresh out of the refrigerator and freshly opened a couple days ago. So it's still good, but treat all your vermouth like wine. And you don't always have to get a big bottle. I have a big bottle because stores, just, I'm limited to where I can send my husband to go and he gets whatever I say. And he usually gets like handles of alcohol and yep, <laughs> there you go, Andrew. <laughs> You don't need a whole lot, unless you really like it, then that's uh, your own thing. So our three ingredients are going to be the vermouth, the Campari, and the soda. So first you're going to build it. And building a beverage means that you're going to just place the ingredients on top of each other. You're not going to shake it. You're not going to break it. You're not going to uh, blend it by any means. So I'm just going to get ice. <laughs> Right. And I kind of have small rocks glasses. Um, so I didn't fill it all the way to the top, but if you see bartenders in bars filling the ice all the way up to the top, um, and there's only two ingredients, that's okay. It doesn't mean they're shorting you on the alcohol. They just might be shorting you on the actual mix. So you're going to have a stronger drink because you're not going to have as much of, um, let's say cran if you order a vodka cranberry, you're gonna get the count of alcohol, the, the vodka, but you're not gonna get the same count of the mixture. So whenever I make drinks, I don't always fill the ice to the top. Uh, it's just not necessary, unless you like a really strong drink, drink really cold, which actually sounds really good right now. Um, so first things first. So can anyone tell me if I'm putting an ounce and a half of Campari into my glass, how many Italian counts do we do? Three. Perfect. We all know how to count Italians now. This is great. <laughs> That's not offensive. I'm totally trying to be funny. Uh, all right. So we're going to do one Italian, two Italian, three Italian. Equal parts to vermouth. One, two, three. Dependent on uh, how strong you like your beverages. That's how much soda water you're going to add. I'm just going to fill it to the top. I don't mind extra soda water. Some people just like a dash or a splash, just something whoop, quick and easy to add a little carbonation. Um, I like a whole refreshing drink with a lot of carbonation. So I'm just gonna gently with my spinny spoon, new technical term, Jennifer, gently stir it. You can use an orange wedge, a lemon wedge. Uh, you can use a peel, a twist, any kind of garnish you want. I stick to citruses. I don't do anything wild and crazy. So again, you just want to make sure you the, use it. Yes. A minute. How much of the sweet vermouth again? Uh, three Italians. 
So one and a half ounces. And what was the Comparte? Uh, so Sorry. Uh, one and a half ounce of Campari, one and a half ounce of vermouth. Perfect. And you can give it a nice stir. For this particular drink, because it has, I used red sweet vermouth. Um, and the reason being is I like that heavier, darker cherry grape flavor. It's still going to taste really bitter, uh, which is why I like the soda water. I like that salt to balance it out. I like the citrus. Again, I like to zest my oranges, zest my garnishes over the beverage so you get that extra aromatic flavor. So you're not just smelling uh, the vermouth, which is really strong. Does anyone have any stories from uh, their first Americano or have you had this before in a different variation? Looks like James has a, a variation. <laughs> Um, I have a comment. I had one called a Milano Torino, which is yeah. very similar. Oh, it's and I don't know if the same. Yep. So basically, uh, Milano Torino comes from uh, the name Milan, which is also home in Italian, uh, or they use Mil uh, Milan for home. And Torino, it was Vermouth di, uh, Vermouth di Torino. And so they took Milan and home, or so they took uh, Milan and Torino. So it's the same drink, Americano. Um, different name. There might be a different variation as far as kind of uh, how many ounces of each alcohol, or if there's more soda water, or if there's more bitters, or actual uh, bitters. I know that they use a lot of those in there. But yeah, it's the same drink, basically. But yeah, thanks for bringing that up. So it's... Uh, how much club soda for the Americano? So it calls for one ounce, but you can put as much or as little as you want. I think someone like Andrew would probably like a splash because he likes those flavors. <laughs> I'm guessing. I actually have no idea what he likes. Um, or, yes. <laughs> or you can do, it calls for one ounce. Uh, so you can do like a two count of soda water, or you can do fill it all the way to the glass. If you have a tall glass, short glass, whatever. I just filled it to the top because... I know that with my ratios, it's going to give it a nice balance. It's not going to take away from the flavor. It's not going to add too much salt to the drink. James, were you saying something? No, I just, I wish I could remember when I had an Americana, but I probably had two of them and forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so it used to be one tequila, two tequila, three tequila floor, but apparently here it's one Americano, two Americano. We don't know anything anymore. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bravo, bravo. <laughs> I'm here all night. Just kidding. I'm not. <laughs> all right, so uh, to answer the question again and to explain why. So the Americano came before the Negroni, and that's because there was a count back in, oh gosh, maybe the 1830s, who came into, who went into an Italian bar and was like, oh, the Americano, it's too weak for me. I, I don't need that soda water. I don't need to hydrate. I don't want any of that. I want a real man's count drink. Give me gin. So instead of soda water for this next drink, we're going to use gin. So that's going to be, uh, and we're actually changing it up a little bit as far as ratios. We're going to do a one to one to one ratio, one ounce, uh, let's see, that's one ounce of the uh, gin, one ounce of the Campari, and one ounce of the sweet vermouth. So a lot of people that I've seen um, in bars, in real life, um, and a couple people on YouTube for whatever reason, they prefer beef eaters gin, which is totally fine. Um, all gins are different. They have different flavors. They've mixed them. Different proprietors have made their own um, kind of ways of gin. I prefer Hendrix gin because... It just has a smoother flavor to me, and I feel like it blends better uh, with the vermouth. So we're going to do 
<laughs> Win her over. Gin, sweet red vermouth. Aha! Cheers. James has good taste. Us too. <laughs> so, oh, good job. All right, I'm glad we're all in the same class. Uh, so, anyways, we're going to do one ounce of Campari, one ounce of gin, and one ounce of this red sweet vermouth. So, and then building it, again, I like to do the Campari first because that is weighted. It's gonna go down. It's not gonna settle funky in the drink. It's gonna be nice and layered. And then with your spoon, you're gonna be able to stir it nicely. So I'm gonna just set that to the side so you can see. So I have my rocks glass. I'm gonna fill it with ice. Again, I don't always fill my glass full. Um, I decide at the end if I need more ice, because you can always add. You can't really take away because then it gets messy. So I'm going to add my ice. So can anyone tell me uh, what I should be pouring? If I start with the Campari, I'm doing one ounce. So how many seconds am I actually pouring? Two. Two. Perfect. Whew. Jacqueline, I feel like I can teach your class. Jacqueline's a got it. teacher. <laughs> So, I'm going to detention. Pardon? Can we go to detention? Oh, yes. And in detention, you have to drink Americanos. And when you're better behaved, you get an agroni. It's a graduation yeah. step. <laughs> All right. So, I'm going to do two counts of Campari. One, two. I'm going to do two counts of gin. One, two. A little extra, I guess, for good measure. And two ounces. So, with the vermouth, because it does have that stronger, bitter flavor, I'm only going to do one, a uh, little less than half an ounce. I don't prefer that rooty flavor. Uh, so you can pick and choose how much of ratio. It always starts to one equal parts, one to one to one, but you can switch it up as you prefer. So I'm just going to do a, yeah, just a little bit. And you can make that noise when you do it. <laughs> so again, for garnish, as you can see, this glass is not filled to the top. It's gonna to be more of like a bourbon style drink where you're just enjoying more of the flavors and the strength of the liqueur and the alcohol. Um, you're not gonna to wanna to spruce it up, it's not a spritzer, it's like a, a real count drink, a real man's drink, a real woman's drink. Um, so again, with the garnish, you can use a lemon wedge, a lemon slice, orange. I again prefer just the peels because I don't want the extra fruit in my beverage. Um, and I always twist and turn to make sure the oils come out of my uh, peel. And again, just a little stir, and voila, you have your Negroni. All right, does anyone have another variation of a Negroni that they've come across or they prefer? Whether it's different counts or different. I think she's making Carlotta, have you ever had a Negroni? No, it's not my kind of drink. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know nothing about Negroni, even if I'm Italian. But James is doing a great job over there. Can you show us your glass? Oh, Ooh, there it is. Oh, I'm sorry, but he's the MVP of this uh, beverage making. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else has a glass to show to us and Amanda? Jennifer? <laughs> Have you drank yours already? <laughs> Jennifer's on top of it. Drink it. Drink it. Next. <laughs> right? Oh, man. So again, there's lots of variations uh, to the Negroni. You don't have to use gin. My, and I'm going to admit this, um, my least favorite spirit is gin. I just don't love that. It's just that juniper flavor just gets me. I don't know if it's just me or if it's common, but it's not my favorite. So you can use vodka. You can use Andrew. You can use bourbon. I would use a little less of the vermouth if you're going to use bourbon because you don't want it to be such a strong, overpowering uh, smell of a drink and taste of a drink. You can balance it by using half an ounce of vermouth one and a half ounces of bourbon, and then the one ounce of Campari. Yeah, so, does anyone have any questions or other ideas that they could use for a Negroni? 
We want to know which is your favorite among these four. I'm a spritz girl. I, I really like to drink, but I like the action of drinking. It doesn't have to be full of alcohol. So with the spritz, I can drink more. <laughs> I always have something in my hand because I'm the awkward dancer. I need something in my hand to feel balanced. Okay. And do you oh, have but, any suge suggestions in terms of where do you fi where find all the bottles and, uh, and all the tools maybe for, for our guest? Yeah. So like the tools, like I said, you can find anything in your home and find a little strainer. Like, example, that's it. So my husband, um, he cooks a lot. So we have all sorts of tools. We have a very fine strainer and it's not, it's for soups. Like, I don't exactly know what it's for. I, my husband cooks the food, I make the drinks, but it's a really fine strainer. So you can use something like this when you strain your martinis so you don't get any ice chips. You don't have to go out and buy one. If you have something like this at home and you're not doing a presentation in front of anyone, just make it up. As long as you have a knife, a strainer, any kind of zester, that's really important because again, you wanna get all those flavors out of the peels and out of the rinds so that you have that very aromatic beverage. Um, a spoon, you can use any spoon. It's just if you're presenting or if you're going to an event and you're actually the bartender, you want to do things quickly. So you want to get, you know, the bartender's best friend, which is a wine key bar opener. There's always a knife attached um, that you cut the foil just around uh, the neck of the wine bottle. I have a question for everyone. When you open a wine bottle, what turns the wine key or the bottle? Bob. The wine key. The wine key always churns because you want to present everything you're doing. So you always want to present the label to the guest or to your friends or to your husband or whoever is with you or to yourself, just face yourself. But you always move the wine key as opposed to the bottle. The whole thing between my legs doesn't count. So to answer your question, Carlotta, some great tips um, for bar tools are always have a paring knife, always have, if you have a peeler, a spritzer, a zester, wine opener, spoon. Um, one thing I didn't really talk about or use is a jigger. Um, you're not gonna always use a jigger, like you can't really just measure out every ounce. I'm a counter, so I always do the one, two, three, up on four, four for my one and a half, uh, one and a half ounce beverages. And then I make up the rest. You can build it. Um, I usually try and stick to the right ratios when I create drinks for weddings or for at home. If I was to do a birthday party for James, I was the bartender. I would create this beautiful blood orange margarita spritzer. I don't know, made that up, but it sounds really good. Maybe with like a watermelon wedge or something with a little jalapeno on the side. Mm. Uh, I would make sure that I would do the ingredient correctly for that. But for the most part, I just make it up. Um, one thing I really want to let all of you know is there's really no wrong way to bartend if you're trying. If you're trying to do it correctly, if you're trying to do the right pours, you really can't go wrong. Um, we're not in college anymore, so I don't want to hear of anybody pouring a bunch of alcohol in a cooler and calling it jungle juice and hoping for the best. <laughs> Never heard good stories from that. <laughs> I feel like Jacqueline has a couple stories. <laughs> so as long as you're trying, you can't go wrong. What's that? Good stories at that. Oh, good stories. Oh, man. Oh man. Um, so can I answer other questions for you? I, I know I talk a lot and I talk fast. I hope that I was able, oh yes. What do you think of the barrel aged Negronis? So I actually bought a bottle of it and it was so potent. I had to mix it with uh, Campari just to kind of balance out that flavor. It's almost like molasses syrupy. It's so dense in flavor. Um, I prefer fresh ones because I can control the ratios, but the barrel aged ones, it's, I think it's maybe someone who's more seasoned or more, um, who likes Negronis more. <laughs> a drinker. A drinker, yeah. I guess a drinker, someone who prefers Negronis and that kind of rooty, bitter taste. I can't drink Jaeger, it's not one of my things, but it has a very similar like licorice-y, bitter flavor. Um, that's also very syrupy and I can't do it. 
What other questions do we have? Jennifer, I know you've got questions for me. <laughs> Maybe our guests can, can tell us which one of the four they like the most. Like, yeah. They like the most doing or they, they like the most drinking. Andrew and, and Jennifer, which is your favorite among I, the four drinks? I really, en oh. I really enjoyed making the Aperol spritz with you guys. When I tried it when I was in Italy, I felt like it was more of the Aperol and less of the Prosecco. And so for me, I enjoyed it more because I could put a little more Prosecco, so it was took it off. But the peach bellini was delicious, and we tried it with brandy, and it was even better. So, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. One. <laughs> I like that. Um, the Aperol Spritz is my favorite. <laughs> for sure. The Bellini is good, and the Americano is good, and the Negroni is good, but I'm, I'm, I, uh, put some soda water or the club soda in the Negroni to kind of mix the two. Yeah. And that was, that was good. Yeah. This and is still my favorite. Yeah, the Negroni is definitely my favorite. Yeah. Hold it. Surprise. Yeah. <laughs> and they are hard drinks to make. Uh, they are very strong flavors that you're working with. So if you want to add soda water, um, or if you want to add more anything, really, I would stick with the soda water because those salts are going to help partner with that strength of the, the bitterness and the sweetness and those um, really strong flavors that come through. I wouldn't do gin. I mean, sorry, I wouldn't do tonic. It's just not going to add very much strength to your drink or structure, I should say. What about James, Anthony, and Deb? Me? I have yeah. a technical question. Yeah, what's your favorite among these four? Well, among these four, probably the only thing I would drink would be the Negroni because we would have that during the cold season in Italy, and then during the warm season, we'd have a Vermentino or a Falangina or something, a white wine, so. Anthony? I've never had an Americano in Italy, so I have to try one there. <laughs> hey, when you go, let us know. We'll all take a family trip there. Yeah, yeah someday. <laughs> yeah. Question from James. I have a question. Sure. Fabri or Lux Luxardo? Pardon? Fabri or Luxardo for the cherries? Ooh, I like Bada Bing. Bada Bings are my favorite. Okay. So I grew up in Hawaii and we used to uh, make moonshine. And what we do is we take maraschino cherries, the red ones, the bright, oh, overpowering syrupy ones, and we pour it in our moonshine and we take shots. So basically the moonshine would take any color out of the maraschino cherries. So we had albino looking cherries, pure white. So we would take shots just eating the cherries. And it was like, oh man, it's like battery acid going down your throat. It was awful. But it got to the point very quickly. <laughs> but Bada Bing are my favorite just because they don't have a sweet, syrupy flavor, but they still add that color and character, and they still have taste without overpowering, um, without that manufactured sweet taste. Thank you. I don't know if that answers your question or just makes more questions, but. <laughs> I have to go out and find more cherries. <laughs> oh, you know what? So we, have, so we have 33 acres of orange trees, and I've been out there picking a few times a week. And one of our friends has chair as a cherry farm, and we're gonna trade. I wanted to make my own um, kind of like a cherry look here. So I'm gonna send him oranges so he can make orange cello, which I made last week and it was delicious. And I'm gonna make some kind of uh, cherry look here. So maybe the next class, I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> maybe I'll teach you. Yeah. Yeah. What's the address there? <laughs> right, Amanda, I'll, I'll be your guinea pig. Oh, sure. Heck yeah. And if there just happens to be some cherry moonshine, call me. Oh, man. So, I, so my husband's name is also Andrew. So I think I'm going to have Andrew. He's been wanting to make this since I've been telling him all these family stories about our cherry moonshine. And he's been wanting to make it. So if he makes it, I'll have you, I'll send some over for you. Thank you.
So we like to experiment uh, with fruits and vegetables and see what we can make and add. Like I mentioned in the beginning, I like to make a lot of my own simple syrups. Uh, the other day I taught a class, or I guess a couple weeks ago now, uh, I made a sage and honey simple syrup. I made, I think Andrew and Jacqueline were in that class. We also made a sage and ginger simple syrup and it was really good. So be creative, mm -hmm. think of your favorite flavors and you can make that into a simple syrup and add that to your base, whether that's a gin or a vodka or a Prosecco. You can make any sort of spritz. Thank you. So um, I think we, we can close this with a, uh, we say chin chin in Italian, that means like toast. So maybe we can close this happy hour together with a toast or chin chin, everybody. I know you can drink, Amanda, but it's like uh, <laughs> spiritual, let's say. And then we have James and Anthony and, and Deb connected. So chin chin, everybody. Chin -chin. Happy Friday. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Happy Friday. So um, Hi, everyone. I want to thank Amanda, of course, for this wonderful lesson. And I think we all learned a lot of tricks today and to do our own drink, especially now that we are still stuck at home. And um, uh, we are Bay Area Italian Events. I'm Carlotta and connected with me there are also Gisella and Isabella. And we organize all sorts of things to make you uh, like fight boredom at home. So um, if you like, you can go on our website, Bayera Italian Events, and see what we are doing, like other, uh, of course, cooking classes and Italian classes. So just follow us. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being here with us. And uh, happy Friday again. And thank you, Amanda, for being a wonderful bartender for us today. Of course. I hope you've all learned something, and I hope you're all buzzed. Grazie <laughs> mille. Thank you. Okay. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, ciao. Chin, chin. <laughs> chin, chin.